everybody with the slightest interest in forty armor knows that in 1612 a gaggle of witches, or a coven if you're pedantically inclined, from the village of Pendle were frog-marched across Lancashire, put on trial for their nefarious behaviours and executed at Lancaster, just behind the Ashton Memorial on Gallows Hill to be exact. Except they weren't, because the village of Pendle doesn't exist. I know, right? I was just as surprised as you. I could have sworn I went there as a kid. In fact, I distinctly remember an old-fashioned shop with a lattice bay window selling all manner of dark arts related tat, such as James Bond tarot cards and witches on springs. However, Pendle is just the name of the borough surrounding Pendle Hill. There's no actual village called Pendle. There are plenty of other place names within the boundaries of Pendle though, such as Luffley, Sawley, where there are the ruins of a 12th century abbey, Nelson, Downham, where they filmed Whistle Down the Wind and an episode of Poirot, the extremely Lancastrian sounding Barnoldswick, and Reedley Hallows, the latter of which sounds like something out of Harry Potter. Etymologically, Pendle derives from the old Cumbric word pen, meaning, well, hill, and the Saxon word el, which also means hill. So Pendle Hill, then, is just the hilly hill hill. Nobody ever said they were a particularly inventive or romantic lot around these parts. Anyhow, let's get back to those witch trials, which to be honest, the story goes on a bit. There have been more books written about the Pendle Witches than there have been films made featuring Sherlock Holmes. Even Doctor Who's met them, so let's make this quick. Alison Device, the 17th century's answer to a fourth generation council stater, encounters a peddler from Halifax called John Law on his way to Trom Forest. An argument ensues over the purchase of some metal pins. John Law goes purple and suffers a stroke. He accuses Alison Device of witchcraft. Thinking this would look good on her curriculum vitae, she confesses. Big family feud erupts between the Devices and their longtime ignoramus neighbours, the Chattoxes. Everything spins out of control, as it often does with these sort of affairs. Anne Chattox is accused of murdering Robert Nutter. Under torture, understandably, she confesses. James Robinson remembers Nutter accusing Chattox of turning his beer sour, the most heinous crime of all. Accusations of witchcraft fly back and forth, growing exponentially. Caught up in the middle of all this is Alice Nutter of Roughly Hall, who, being more middle class than the rest of them, is wrongfully accused. There's a statue of her in chains being led into the village. She must have forgotten her keys or something. She's buried in New Church, if you're interested. Nobody in Rough Lee was. Nine people end up hanged, all told. Another one dies awaiting trial. A great day out for all the family. Bring some butties and buy some old rope. The clerk of Lancaster Assizes turns the whole fatal pantomime into a best-selling book. 500 years later, the witches are awarded posthumous honours for their contributions to Lancashire tourism. That's how it happened. If you want to be furnished with some of the more lurid details, then there's plenty of books out there on the subject, but not here. This is Lancashire Footnotes after all. Pendle Hill's other claim to fame, or notoriety depending on your perspective, is George Fox, who in 1652, just 40 years after the whole witch's kerfuffle, climbed up to the summit and experienced a vision of great people to be gathered. He was probably hallucinating after the climb. After which, he founded Woodstock. No, sorry, he founded the Society of Friends, otherwise known as the Quaker Movement, and thus commercialised porridge was born. Fox was an intriguing character. He believed that you could get closer to the spirit of Jesus by demolishing the hierarchy of the church, which 
understandably perhaps, didn't sit too well with those in charge. With nobody in the pulpit, Quaker meetings tend to be conducted in silence. Although when a thought pops into somebody's head that they feel the need to share, they're expected to do so. Seriously, you wouldn't be able to shut me up. The image of a silent meeting being suddenly interrupted by somebody standing up and shouting bugger I've left the kettle on springs to mind. Fox believed in equality for all races and genders, which meant that he was always going to spend a lot of time in jail. Eight times in total he was banged up in the slammer. His favourite prisons, including Scarborough, Launston, Leicester and of course Lancaster Castle in 1660, on the trumped up charges of stirring up an insurrection against Charles II. It's easy to convict a Quaker if you're so disposed. For a start, they won't swear an oath on the Bible because Quakers apparently always tell the truth, a bit like Spock. If I was religious, I'd probably opt for their movement, if I'm being honest. There's something about not being able to buy off your conscience by sticking a tenor on a silver collection plate every Sunday that appeals to the socialist in me. There's just time for an unrelated grisly murder. In 1996, Yaved Iqbal, a local taxi driver, murdered his pregnant wife when she refused to allow his girlfriend to move in with them. Not much of an excuse, really. Having dismembered her corpse with an axe and a hatchet, he dumped the remains in the Ribble Valley. After which he made his first real mistake by setting fire to them. The plumes of smoke spiralled into the air at the foot of Pendle Hill, causing passers-by, concerned for a repeat of the recent moorland fires, to telephone the fire brigade, who rapidly discovered the burning body parts. Not the most humorous story, perhaps. Nonetheless, on that cheerful note, we've reached the end of this episode. Click like and please subscribe if you want to see more episodes of Lancashire Footnotes. Don't bother if you don't. You know the score by now, same time, same place next week for more fun and frolics.